Hey guys, welcome back. In the next HG Gundam Battle Log review, we're going to be taking a look here today at the Wing Gundam Sky Zero, which is basically just a recolor of the Wing Gundam Zero HG kit. So if you've ever built that, this is the same kit, just with one additional parts and all in new colors. Now, there is some really cool reasoning behind the color schemes, which I quite like, and we'll see that in the unboxing portion of this. I did actually go ahead and do some panel lining on this kit as well, too, just because why not, so you guys can see what it looks like. I've never built the regular Wing Zero HG kit, so it was an opportunity for me to just build the kit now that we've got a new version of that. So this review will basically act as a review for both of the kits at the same time. If you are interested in the original color scheme version, just imagine this review just being in a different colors, and that's exactly what my thoughts and opinions would be about the original version. I do really like the new color scheme for this. I think I do still kind of prefer the original color scheme, but this color scheme definitely ain't bad. So let's go ahead and check it out. So on the box art here, we got some really cool artwork. Even though the Gundam is now featuring a totally new color scheme, it's still doing the classic pose of the Wing Gundam Zero. So it looks great. We've got the Battle Log logo right there on the front. And yeah, just some cool artwork with a lot of laser blasts and everything going around. There's really not too much going on in the background. It's just up in the sky. But as we'll see, that really plays into the Gundam's design. Going around onto the side of the box, you can see this is number nine in the Gundam Breaker Battle Log line. And on the top of the box here, we have a look at what the kit is going to look like when it's all painted up front and back. It looks really cool. It's a really good looking design. I think they did really good sculpt for this Gundam. And obviously that goes for the original kit and this one too, as it's just a recolor. You got some more information over here. It's in Japanese and English if you want to check that out about the Gundam. And some action poses over here showing off the weapons and articulation. You got the twin buster rifle, the shield, the beam rifles, and then it's transformation into the Neo Bird form, of course. On the other side of the box, once again, it's create your own one of a kind Gunpla, just again styling in the same way as the Gundam Breaker mobile game so that's a pretty cool way for them to kind of advertise for the game as well. A little introduction there for the Gundam Battle Log story and then we can get open the box. Inside here of course we're going to have a couple of bags of runners. Once again it's just all going to be all the same parts as with the original kit. We'll take a look at the runners anyway here in just a minute because like I said I've never reviewed the original kit so we can see what the runners look like. Just for the original kit, it's going to be all the same runners, just different colors. Here on the instruction manual, we got the artwork there at the top as usual. Then down here, rather than an illustration of the kit, which is normal, we have just a photograph of the kit. So I'm wondering if that's just because this is just a color swap, so they didn't make a new line art illustration for this or something, maybe? We got some more information here, once again, in Japanese and in English about the Gundam. Also a little bit there about the Wing Gundam Zero, which this is, of course, based off of. And then around on the back side of the manual, it's just the same photos we saw on the outside of the box here mostly, but again, it's just going over the weapons and a little bit of information about each of the weapons. But again, the nice thing is that everything here is in Japanese and in English, so if you're interested to read a little bit about the background of everything, you can read all that. There's a little feature here just displaying some other mobile suits that have some similar style wings in the HG line, so that's kind of interesting if you like that. We got the color guide here as well. That's also in Japanese and in English, so if you're interested in matching the colors more precisely, you can check that out. Inside here we got the parts list, all there in color, which is nice. And once again, a breakdown of just like a, an example of how you can kit bash some of the different HG kits in the battle log line. And also non-battle log kits would be pretty easy to kit bash as well, just depends on the kit. Then the rest of the manual is just going through the construction of the kit, and then of course toward the back of that we're also going to have instructions for the transformation. And that's basically it. For the sticker sheet, as you can see, you got your standard cameras, eye stickers on there. You do have a few color correcting stickers. It's nothing too bad, but you will have a couple of those. We've got our very familiar polycap runner here, PC002, but this time it's in a dark blue color. We've got SB13 for our clear green beam saber effect parts. Runner A1 here is in a really nice, interesting light blue color. It's the same thing for runner A2, which is a copy of this half of the runner here. And all the runners for this kit, by the way, here are just going to be marked HGAC 144 scale wing Gundam Zero. From 2014 was the original release date for that kit. Runner B here is all of our inner frame, joint parts, and things like that, weapons, and it's all in this dark blue color. Runner C here in black. Runner D is here in a very cool looking teal color. That's going to look nice on the kit. Another really unique color here, runner E1 is in this really cool orange. And then runner E2 is going to be our clear part for the chest there in clear green. Now our only new runner for this is here, runner XA is just this HD144 scale GBB that's going to break our battle log. Just this backpack adapter piece here and that's it. So that's everything guys, as you can see, definitely a very unique color scheme, but I think that's going to make this all the more interesting to put together. So let's go ahead and do that and see how it looks.
So alright guys, so here's what the kit is going to look like when it's all built up. And then I have gone ahead and just done some quick and simple panel lining on this just using a mix of grey, black, and brown panel line markers on this. I say details and proportions wise, it's a really great looking kit and I'm definitely glad that I finally built one of these even though this is not the original color version. Again, just take this review as a review of kind of both versions at once. The new color scheme is really cool and then just based off of the information in the manual it says that this version of the wing gunner was modified for aerial combat in gravity so rather than the original version being for use in space now this one's for use uh, for air aerial combat and the color scheme is to enhance its stealth ability so obviously like kind of sky blue color scheme is going to blend in with the sky a little bit more so it all makes sense very cool kind of reasoning behind this color scheme I think is really nice. Just take a look at the stickers. You got green stickers here in the chest and then one underneath that clear green piece there as well. In the head you got stickers for the cameras and the eyes. Little sticker there on the back of the head as well. These yellow accents on the backpack, those are stickers on there. Then we have a couple stickers on the weapons as well, but those are pretty minimal. So overall stickers are pretty minimal, which is good for the articulation. It's gonna be pretty standard here. The neck, we have that double ball joint polycap so it'll allow the head to go all the way up to there. For the Vulcan in the top of the torso you do have those there but this piece on the top you basically just take that off and it's cool that you got the detail there for that but this part on the top there's not really any good way it doesn't like articulate it's either on or off you can kind of try to place it in a way that it's like kind of half up you can do something like that you might be able to get it to look a little bit better than that but anyway it does open up there is detail there but there's no actual articulation to it in the stomach section you do have a little bit of articulation, a little bit of bend to the front, but you're going to find that it's kind of tight and you're going to pop it off the ball joint probably sooner than the kit is going to actually bend, so you might have an easier time just taking it off and bending this stomach part a little bit and then putting it back on there. Something like that if you guys can see, and it's really not all that much, so not too much articulation there in the stomach section obviously. You can rotate that if you want. The polycap in the shoulder is also the type that will swing forward, but I'm having a really hard time getting that to swing forward without just pulling out the arm as well. So like the polycap you can see is the type that goes to the front like that for this ball joint, but it's just kind of having a hard time staying in place. And then sometimes when I try to push it back in, I'm having this issue where the polycap is going back into the body there like that, which is also kind of annoying. Anyway, the shoulder can go up to about there. You can lift up this piece there as well and you can bring the arm up ultimately to about there and then you can rotate that double joint in the elbow is going to give you a nice full bend there. The wrist is just another ball joint and unfortunately these two holding hands which you see on there are the only hand options we have included with this kit so kind of limited when it comes to hand options. The skirt armor can be moved up and you can clip those apart if you want to have them individually articulated otherwise they'll just move together. The side skirt armor moves up and down a little bit there like that. The back skirt however does not move and you have a hard point on there. Normally in most other cases that would be where you would attach a weapon or something onto the back skirt but in this case it's for the transformation so once you have it transformed uh, that's where you'll plug your action base adapter right there. It's an option for you anyway. While we're here at the backpack though these thrusters don't move but they will come off very easily if you touch it the wrong way so just be careful about that. Those tend to pop out. While these binders move side to side you can rotate them as well and of course they open up like that and you can rotate uh, those a little bit the angle up and down of those as well so really cool backpack binders here for this guy for the legs we've got some rotation there at the top you can bring that up to about 90 degrees perpendicular to the body you got a pretty good double joint there in the knee giving you a pretty full bend not quite totally full and this little bit of armor here down the front of the ankle also move up and down a little bit you have a seam line right down the middle of the lower half of the shin there and there unfortunately and the ankle articulation side to side front to back is pretty standard as you can see when you move the ankle back it kind of pops open the leg a little bit that's kind of also just part of the transformation so should really kind of ignore that up underneath the feet pretty full detail but you do have a little bit of empty gap at the front and the back there unfortunately and getting into our accessories one of the accessories is optional feet so you'll actually have to swap out the feet for the transformation so we'll see that what that looks like transformed here in a little bit but you have a set of those you also have your shield which is where you have a couple of more stickers that black line around the yellow part obviously that sticker there and the shield also extends out like that this will just connect onto the arm pretty nice detail on the inside overall it does look very nice you've got your two beam sabers and handles there nowhere to store the handles when not in use unfortunately those don't uh, store in the back of the shield or something like that would have been nice if they would and of course our twin buster rifle which can be separated into two separate rifles or you can fold up the handle on one side combine them together 
and you've got your Boom Buster rifle. Now this is also yellow stickers, which were up around the front part, but this yellow part here on the top, that's an actual separate yellow piece. So uh, it's kind of half good color separation. But as you can see, lots of detail around on this though. And although it is a pretty big gun, it doesn't weigh a ton, so you shouldn't really have too much in the way of weight. It drops down into the hand super easy, and you're not gonna have any problem with that, I don't think, so that should be fine. Last thing we've got then is just this backpack adapter piece, which I'm not exactly sure really what all that's for, other than just in the manual, it uh, says to use it with the fridge backpack from the ground type Gundam. So you can use that with this if you want to using this adapter piece, or I'm sure other different like types of backpack, but anyway. And so here's what the kit is going to look like when it's all transformed. Honestly, not really, the, you know, the Wing Gundam is not known to have the best looking transformation in any version of the Wing Gundam. But as an HG kit that transforms into the Neo Bird mode, I gotta say, it looks pretty good. It just depends on the angle that you're looking at it from. I don't know too many people who do prefer this design to be in Neo Bird mode rather than just the regular Gundam form. But it's an easy transformation to do and only require but it's an easy transformation to do and the only part swapping required is just for the feet so i gotta say it, it's not bad if this is what you like so i gotta say guys very cool kit i've always been a fan of the wing zero design and always meant to try out the hg kit so i'm glad to have the opportunity to finally get a chance to build this kit even though it's not the original version it's just a recolored version it's still you know basically the same kit so I think Bandai did a really good job on this. Actually, the Master Grade Proto Zero is still on my to-build list someday in the future as well. But overall, everything on this kit works great. The articulation all is quite nice. I am having a little bit of trouble with that polycap shoulder ball joint there. It's kind of popping out really easily. I'm having some struggles with that. So if you guys have had any problems with that particular part of this kit, let me know. I'm just wondering if that's a common issue with this kit or not. But otherwise, the articulation is good. The only real seam line you really have to worry too much about is maybe on the front part of the shin that I pointed out earlier. The weapons and accessories are nice, even though you got a pretty big gun and a pretty big shield, you don't have any weight issues with those. You don't really have weight issues with the uh, wings as well either. So everything's pretty good, solid. You got some nice detail on there, really cool color scheme overall. Great kit. So let me know your guys' thoughts down in the comment section below. What do you think about this kit? Do you prefer the original color scheme or do you prefer this one? Let me know your thoughts, and as always, if you're interested in checking out this kit for yourself, you can check it out at USA Gundam Store. The link and the coupon code for you guys to use will be down in the video description below, as always, so check that out. Thank you all so much for watching the video today, liking the video, commenting, subscribing, is all greatly appreciated. Till next time, guys, hope you're all having a great day. Bye-bye.